so excited about today. We have the Grand Canyon of Cracks. The crack is about two millimeters deep and we're gonna get in there and clean it all up. Let's go. I do all of my pedicure strikes. So the first thing I wanna do to kill those microbes and those germs and also the smell is I'm gonna use my Poto Expert shoe and foot deodorant. This is good for any of your clients, whether it's your smallest little pedicurious or your elderly, your diabetic. Gonna let that sit just like that. I like to rub it in. It has like a, like a nice little tea tree smell to it. Next, I'm gonna ask my model or my client, is there any healthcare concerns that I should be aware of? Okay, that's great. Since we don't have any medical concerns, I asked my client where I should focus and she said the Grand Canyon. So I am taking that as the crack. So I am gonna use my Poto Expert liquid gold to help accelerate my exfoliation. I'm gonna spray it all over the foot and let it sit for two to three minutes, all right? This callus softener has urea, that's the active ingredient. So it's gonna start using moisture to actually break down those skin cells, which makes it diabetic safe. So I'm just gonna rub that in, let it sit for two to three minutes while I get my bit set up. So while I'm letting this sit, I've noticed that with her crack is it's not bloody, it's not oozing, there's no sign of infection, it's just a really deep crack. Since we have a lot of buildup at the top, I'm gonna start off by debulking with my tapered carbide pedicure bit, okay? So now I'm taking my pedicure bit and I'm going against the grain. So I'm running at 35,000 RPMs. And I'm just thinning out that ledge. The foot wants to bend like this. So what we wanna do is we wanna go against the grain so we can lift that crack. And then we'll be sure to go over it with diamond to smooth it out, that way our client doesn't feel like that catch on their carpet when they get home. Now anytime you have deep cracks, you are gonna wanna use the Erica's Petty Debolt Kit. Using a carbide like this to cut down like through the thick skin is gonna save you so much time, especially like if you're doing it by hand. If you're doing pedicures by hand, please check out my YouTube channel because we want you to be more efficient. I mean, look at that already. It's like almost flush. So over here was way more crusty and even here, here it's not as much. So I'm gonna try to concentrate more on that crack so I don't create heat for my client. See how I can like move the skin, whereas here it's more crunchy. A good rule of thumb is if you feel like you could stick a tack into the heel, then go with your carbide. If you feel like, nope, my client would feel that tack right away, that's when you should start off with diamond. That's not always the case, but if you're new to e-filing and when to use a carbide and when to not, that would be a good way to determine. I always am pulling and lifting up, so I'm not creating heat. I'm not keeping this on the skin and just rocking it back and forth. I am trying to go against the grain to lift up that skin. I want my bit to catch. Remember, these feet didn't get this cracked overnight, okay? So don't feel like you need to take it all down, especially if your client is an athlete. See this little flap of skin right here? If I'm going down with my carbide, it's not catching, okay? I can see how the grain of the foot is going and I can see where it's, hold it on, where it's held on, right here on that left side. So if I go against it, it's also not coming off. So if I go against the grain, which would be up and to the right, if I go against the grain with my bit, boom, just like that. Created some more. Okay, so right here are cracks. Just gently going over it. If the skin starts to get really soft right here, that's okay. We're gonna use another bit and to get deeper into that crack, okay? I'm gonna actually hold my e file like this. I am standing while I do this so my back doesn't turn into Quasimodo. Going against the grain, pulling the skin tight, being in communication with my client, making sure I'm just staying on that callous skin. The rest of it, I will get with the diamond. We're using these little blades to just debolt that callus. Perfect, that's as comfortable as I feel. I'm starting to see it turn pink and the skin's a lot softer. So I'm gonna move on to the toe. All right, look at this, it's sexy. Gonna go against that grain, so the grain is going horizontal, so I'm going vertical. Okay, 
being very, very gentle. Now, since she was really crusty on the heels, I did apply more pressure. So usually I am telling you guys like pressure like a kitty. That was like, yeah, like we've been on vacation for a week and you miss your big Labrador and it just jumps on you. And it's like, <laughs> like that pressure. Making sure I'm just staying on that callus. I'll tell you what, if you take that tip and you get right there where there's no callus, you are going to zing your client. You're going to zing your client. All right, now I have my Pedicure D Bulk Sphere, and I reduced my RPMs to 25, just to kind of see where I'm at, okay? I see the skin starting turning more pink, but what I'm able to do now is get more into that crack, just stretching it. Really, really gentle. I'm seeing more people use a carbide to carve out these little artificial cracks. They're not artificial. These aesthetic cracks, just be careful and play around with your RPMs so that you make sure that you're not burning your client. The objective is not to go to the point where they're feeling heat. So I'm just using that ball bit. I'm trying to avoid using any kind of point in that crack because I don't want to draw blood. I want to be really careful. This is, if my client was a diabetic, I probably, I definitely would not go this far. My client made it clear that she wants me to spend all of my time on her cracks. So we will not be doing any polish. And that's fine. That's what I love about dry pedicuring is it really allows me to customize the experience for my client. All right. So I've decided just to grab my unicorn bit, which is a dual cutting tool and the medium grit. And look how much we've removed. It's not a Grand Canyon anymore. So I'm just kind of flossing it, taking my unicorn medium grit at 18,000 RPMs and just flossing it. Pulling the skin back, getting into that crack. This is diamond. I'm running it at lower speed, just softening up. I'm just opening that up a little more. This is more like becoming more of an aesthetics pedicure. I just wanted to show you guys what I was referring to. I'm gonna not use my micro taper or a deep tail bit. I'm using the unicorn, which I'm also gonna use on her toes can also use this bit on the hands, but this is also why it's really important to make sure that you follow a strict, proper disinfection process. Sometimes too, your client like will have this like really crunchy crust right here, right where it folds. See how the skin just naturally, sometimes I'll pull that up and just get that right in there, just to exfoliate it, just to soften it. Right, and if my client doesn't make any lifestyle changes to shoes, you know, sometimes it's also genetics and medication. But what I want to do is make sure she understands we need to come in more regularly so we don't go back to Grand Canyon status. All right, so I have my extra coarse skin bit that is also in my debolt kit. So all the bits that I've shown you so far are in the Petty Plus Debolt kit and the Petty Plus Toes kits. Those are the two kits for dry pedicuring that you absolutely need. So now that I've done all that exfoliation, with my carbide, I absolutely have to smooth it all out. So I'm running at 20,000 RPMs with my Erica's Diamond pedicure bit, and I'm just going over the foot. So here I'm just softening everything. This is how I'm ending my pedicure. Because remember, I've been going against the grain, now I'm just working in a circular motion. You also don't need to step down. So whether you start with a coarse or an extra, extra coarse Erica's pedicure bit, you can finish with that bit as well. Unlike steps like sanding paddles where you usually start with something more abrasive and then step down your grip. You do not need to do that with your diamonds, but if you use carbide, you always need to finish with diamonds. Circular motion, and I am lifting up my tool because I don't want to burn my client, okay? You might find that your handpiece is getting a little warmer or there might even be like a little more shimmy in your e-file. This is a bigger head. Okay, so the closer you can have it to the handpiece without it touching and not affecting your range of motion, the better. If you have this bit sticking out really far, you're gonna lose control. Now for the fun part. I'm gonna use my Poto Expert orange label, so that is for dry and cracked feet. 
This is a diabetic safe product. And what I love, it doesn't just actually moisturize, but it actually repairs the skin. But also my client had expressed that really getting her heel cracks under control was a priority to her. So I'm gonna recommend this product as a retail product, sell this to her, and then make sure I put her in my books for four to six weeks, right? So we can really get these cracks healed up. And what I love about this product is it doesn't just moisturize, but it repairs, okay? Yeah, you can go to the grocery store and get a big container or Costco full of Vaseline, but guess what? That is not going to help, all right? We need to repair. Vaseline does not repair on the feet. It just creates more problems. I know, that's hard. This is my closing like and subscribe, but the best part is I'm gonna ask my model now to touch her foot. Go ahead, touch it. You can say it. How's it feel? Awesome. Awesome? Tonight, she's gonna be playing footsie.